conceptual mechanics concepts are exactly the same here as they were in the previous lesson. So parallel to the plane, we can apply conservation of linear momentum. Perpendicular to the plane, we can apply Newton's experimental law. And if we're asked to work out the impulse, which is always perpendicular to the surface, then we can just use the change in momentum of the body. The only difference in this lesson is that we're using vector notation. Parallel to the surface, we can apply conservation of linear momentum and therefore the J components before and after will be equal. And that's why Q equals negative four. Perpendicular to the surface, we can apply Newton's experimental law and therefore we can compare the I coefficients um, and use E as separation speed over approach speed. And that then gives us the velocity of the ball after impact. We can calculate the speed of the ball before and after impact by just working out the magnitude of the velocity vectors and then using the fact that kinetic energy is a half mv squared and work out the difference between the initial ke and the final ke. To find the angle of deflection, we just need to work out the angle between the two vectors and we can use uh, the dot product to do this. So a dot b equals magnitude of a times magnitude of b times cos theta and this just then rearranges into the format that's been used here. In the previous example we knew that the surface was a, a vertical surface and therefore we could relatively easily apply conservation linear momentum and Newton's experimental law. However, there is no reason why the surface has to be vertical or horizontal. It could be inclined at, at any kind of angle. Um, and in these cases, we use the vector dot product. This is a really important little method. So the component of a velocity V acting in the direction of an impulse I is calculated by evaluating the dot product or scalar product of the velocity vector and the unit vector in the direction of the impulse I. Example two is an example of this method. It's worth noting in this example that it's the velocity before and after the impact that we're given. We have no idea about the actual inclination of the wall. We, we don't know whether it's vertical, horizontal, or whether it's at some angle. Um, and that's why we need to use the, the dot product method that we're about to have a look at. We know the initial velocity, we know the final velocity, um, and therefore we can work out the impulse acting on the object, even though we don't actually know what the, uh, the mass of the object is as a numerical value. Once we've got the impulse vector, then we can work out a unit vector in the direction of the impulse. Here we are working out the component of the velocities before and after the impact in the direction of the impulse. So u dot i hat we can evaluate and v dot i hat we can evaluate and then we will be able to apply Newton's experimental law to work out the value of e. Now that we know the component of the velocities uh, in the direction of the impulse before and after the impact we can just apply Newton's experimental law so e is separation speed over approach speed remembering its speed and therefore we can use the uh, previous answers to work out the value of e.